Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy XIII walkthrough. Uh, we are just about to complete our next Mark mission. Or we will be soon. I, sh I should say actually we're on our way there. Now uh, this one, I I believe I mentioned it in the previous video, but it took me a couple of tries to, uh, to get just right. And uh, I still think that I could have tweaked it a little bit to do, you know, just a little bit of a better job. Uh, if I remember right here, <clears throat> um, I, I go in with the, uh, the Relentless Assault paradigm, and I think, in hindsight here, I wish I would have tried uh, Aggression, I believe is the name of it. It's the uh, Double Commando plus one Ravager. <clears throat> and, um, you know, again, I feel like that one would have would have potentially worked a little bit better. Now, the reason why I say that is because there's a lot of targets, and uh, oftentimes what you'll want to do is uh, get a couple of blitzes going, uh, you know, on all those targets to uh, to uh, either get them down really fast if uh, if they're low uh, HP targets, or uh, if you can get a preemptive strike here, which I believe I did. Yeah. All right. So. Um, I don't remember now, again, now, so I took a cut here, and um, I don't know if I, yeah, okay, so I do have some shrouds on here. So the, I probably used, if I would, uh, if I could guess, I'd guess I used all three. I would bet that I used, uh, you know, one of every shroud to try to get uh, this, this done uh, in a better uh, way. And again, now, I really think I should have used um, the, uh, sorry, the aggression um, paradigm to try to, to try to get this down earlier. Uh, and again, the reason why is because, um, you know, you want to get, <clears throat> you want to get blitzes out, and the, the good thing about that, uh, that aggression paradigm is your commandos will actually target different enemies. And so they'll try to do, you know, maximum damage over the most amount of enemies, and, uh, and by targeting different enemies like that, um, your commandos are able to keep their ch chain gauges up, uh, you know, due to the, uh, due to the preemptive strike. So, um, that's kind of like the, I guess that's kind of the way I wish I would have done this. Now, obviously, I didn't. I went with, um, just the Relentless Assault, uh, and then, um, you know, obviously I've got Shrouds on, and that helped out quite a bit, too. Now, the, really the, the goal of, of this here is to try to get these these enemies, uh, you know, down extremely fast. Unfortunately, the problem with these uh, is that they they summon these these uh, bigger bigger baddies. Now, um, if if only one, like uh, in this case, the Ugalu, Ugalu, whatever, however you want to say this guy's name, um, you know, if only one of them gets summoned, that's not so bad. That's not the biggest uh, deal in the world. But um, uh, you know, unfortunately, if you if you're swapping around your targets too much, you'll notice that they'll you'll get bogged down by enemies, and uh, you know that that'll happen if uh, the the little what are those things? I believe they're the imp type, or are they? No, I'm sorry. I believe they're technically in the uh, spooks category, which um, interesting name choice there. But uh, uh, anyways. Uh, like I said, so you'll want to get those little guys down first before they're able to summon. And that's really what's going to, you know, determine your success here. The cool thing about this, uh, this Mark mission is actually they give you a ton of time. Uh, and that's, and that's because they expect those enemies to be summoned. So, you know, I guess just keep that in mind. You don't have to, uh... You know, do it. Cra you actually don't have to do this uh, crazy fast. You know, if you uh, if you don't want to use shrouds, then um, you know, by all means, don't. Um, and just you know, you can extend out the battle, and you know, there's still a really good chance that you'll hit your target time as long as you're um, choosing your targets wisely and whatnot. But um, for me, uh, obviously, I wanted to get that done extremely fast. I didn't want them to be summoning all kinds of extra enemies to take down. And uh, I really wanted to get that five-star rating uh, the first time. I didn't want to have to do that uh, mark mission again. So uh, again, that's that's kind of how I went. Obviously, my characters are fairly well developed. Um, uh, but to be honest, you know, I could have done some other things that, that you know potentially would have helped out. Number one, I, I feel like uh, using aggression would have been a better 
uh, paradigm to start out in, but uh, you know, again, I, I didn't, so hindsight's 2020, I suppose. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, actually, my characters have some accessories still equipped that probably weren't, uh, you know, the most optimal. You know, the, any any of these that uh, are giving a buff that that I got uh, from the shroud. You know, sprint shoes is a good example. The morale talisman, and uh, I believe the blessed talisman as well. So those are all essentially kind of. Uh, e you can kind of argue that they're they're wasteful. Now the sprint shoes still synergize with. Uh, lightning's weapon uh, for the boost. I believe it's uh, the, those two items are in the boost category. So they're giving her ATB plus 10% or, you know, basically a 10% uh, faster recharge rate. So uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. You know, there's uh, <laughs> there's definitely uh, worse things. But, um, you know, again, if you're if you're having problems with that uh, with that fight back there, you know, again, you can you can uh, make some changes that would uh, potentially uh, make it a little easier. All right, anyways, though, this is Mark V, uh, Ed Edimu, I think is the name of the, the Mark here. And uh, this one's not too bad. I'm trying to remember if this is the one that creates the teleporter. I feel like this is the one. Um, so this Seeth Stone, once you actually complete the Mark, should, like I said, turn into a teleporter. So we'll see if that's the case or not. And um, this is one of the marks I actually want to point out here because uh, it's it's got a, a really good drop now. Uh, so okay, so just just so you guys know, you know, once again, obviously we, we're getting uh, rewards or one-time rewards for uh, when we complete these. I, I shouldn't say that. I should say first-time rewards. Um, all of these mark missions actually can be done one more time. But instead of getting that first time reward, they'll they'll give you a different uh, reward for you know subsequent uh, victories. Uh, in, in many cases, it's it's uh, it'll be you know some sort of upgrading material. Uh, a lot of you know like bomb bomb shells and bomb cores are very very common uh, as the secondary reward. Uh, but anyways, this enemy itself though the Edemu. Uh, again, hopefully, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter though. But uh, anyway, so he's got a uh, a drop, uh, and I believe I end up getting it. Um, so uh, sorry, he's got. There's actually two drops. So one is obviously the common, one is the rare. Uh, I believe the rare is the nimble toe shoes. Now those those are per, those are pretty okay. I mean, <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't really don't use them that much, but uh, they're good. And uh, they what they're actually going to do is increase. Um, there's an ability that the sentinels get, or certain sentinels anyway. I know lightning is one of them, and I believe hope is another. Um, and uh, that actually is going to increase the effectiveness of that uh, specific skill. I believe it's elude, uh, elude, and maybe possibly even evade, if I remember right. So, um, you know, if you've got a favorite sentinel or uh, you know a sentinel that you need those for, then I guess you could farm them. Now, that being said, I I'll, I'll be completely honest. I would not recommend. <laughs> farming uh, the Edemu, um, just because I I, I feel like uh, so so number one uh, the nimble nimble toe shoes or boots or whatever um, they're not that great uh, to, just, just to be completely honest there um, <coughs> uh, I mean I, I would say that uh, number one I rarely use uh, lightning in a sentinel roll uh, there's a you know there's a couple of times and actually <laughs> let me back up. It's rare that I use anybody in a sentinel role, um, let alone someone like Lightning. Now, there are, again, some specific scenarios where that's a, that's a really good item, but, um, you know, they're, they're kind of few and far between. Now, the other bigger uh, reason why I would say don't necessarily farm him is because um, there's just, it seems to me there's easier ways to uh, get those, those items. Now, um, especially being uh, just the fact that it's a rare drop, um, so, you know, you could end up trying to kill that guy, you know, however many times. So the rate's not that great. Um, so, I guess just keep that in mind. Now, his uh, his regular drop is the Whistlewind Scarf. Now, that thing is pretty fantastic, and it it's, uh, well, by, by itself, it's okay. Um, its upgrade, though, uh, is the Aurora Scarf, I believe, if I remember right. <clears throat> and it basically is just a, a direct upgrade over the Whistlewind Scarf. Now, the Aurora Scarf then can be upgraded into those uh, nimble toe boots or whatever they were called. 
Um, but again, no, I really don't. I don't feel like that's a, that's a worthwhile upgrade, uh, unless you specifically need those, um, and you know, and that fits into a strategy that you're that you're trying to go for. Now here, I'm playing around a little bit, so uh, you know, just keep in mind because I couldn't remember where this mark is at, but. Uh, <laughs> I guess if you really want to, you can just fast forward. I, I kind of run around here for a little bit because, again, I was I was a little confused where the mark was actually at. Um, but anyway, so the uh, the nimble toe boots, again, I really don't feel like they're that great. Um, and then the whistle wind scarf is, is awesome, but here's the deal. It's buyable from the Moogle Works store. I believe it's even buyable right now. So, um, and for cheap, they're like... 3,000 gil. So, again, I, I feel like it's a complete waste of time to uh, to try to far, farm Edemu, even though it does have a, a decent, you know, drop, um, as well as, you know, a, a fairly decent rare. Um, so, that you know, that being said, it's just as far as, as time-wise, and then I guess the, kind of like the third and final nail in the coffin is the Seeth Stone is way too far away from the Mark location. So it doesn't even make... You know, there's just a lot of travel time between here and there. So, again, now, I I just can't recommend farming that, you know, even though it does have a fairly decent or a neat item or a couple neat items. I just don't feel like it's, uh, you know, worth the time. All right, so here's where I think I'm getting my act to get. There it is. There we go. So, uh, you know, anytime you've got... Uh, you know, some questions on where the, the mark is. Just make sure you guys are, you know, opening up your map. I, <laughs> I think this is kind of where I had to, uh, I guess, remember that that little fact. Now, uh, unfortunately, the the maps can, I admittedly, uh, they can be a little misleading, uh, especially in certain areas of the game. Uh, you know, Arclight Step is fairly cut and dry, but... You know, just because there's there's so many marks that are actually there, uh, but there's also a lot of maps that aren't. You know, that'll that'll start in one zone and kind of end up in another. So, um, you know, unfortunately, with that stuff, it, it may be worthwhile to just uh, you know. I think actually, what I'll do is I'll do a bunch of um, uh, guides back to back. I'll just do all the marks. You know, from one to I don't remember how many there are. Sixty something, I think. But uh, I'll just do a you know a guide or a, a series of guides. And I'll generally actually probably split them up just so that they're easier to kind of pick through. You know, maybe I'll do like a playlist of uh, all the marks. I think that probably makes sense. Uh, and that way uh, you can you can get a, a better idea of where stuff is at now. Um, you know, because a lot of times, like I said, you'll open up your map and it'll it'll look like it's in one spot. And then, well, here, here it's actually a couple zones over and... You know, once you can actually teleport around it, it's actually going to make some of this uh, mark hunting a bit easier. Uh, but anyways, alright, so this is him. This is Edemu, and uh, I actually got extremely lucky here. I got myself a, a whistle wind scarf for this victory. Which, you know, again, crazy, crazy lucky. And uh, actually, there's another guy that I'm actually going to... Uh, definitely recommend farming, and uh, I believe I got his drop right away as well. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's kind of one of the, the cool things about these, uh, doing these guides is sometimes it works out and you get the drop, and, you know, that way I've got footage of it, so it's like, hey, check out this cool stuff that you can get. But, uh, here, I think I may end up redoing this. This is not looking good. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's redo that. Um... Now, if you have, uh, if you've done a lot of, like, uh, shroud farming, uh, you know, I would, I would actually almost recommend using some of them, or, you know, in certain spots, uh, just because there's not really much else that, uh, that really merits using them, to be honest. Uh, most of the, you know, I don't know if you want to call them random battles, or just, uh, you know, kind of like landscape battles, uh, I'll, you know, most of those you're just not going to need shrouds for, so... Um, you know, and then and then on top of that, you get a bonus, or uh, there's a, you know I should say I don't know if it's a, it actually is a bonus or not, but there's an achievement for getting five stars on all of the uh, all the marks, and actually uh, I believe there is a reward though too from um, oh boy it's uh, it's in one of the 
I guess it's kind of like a little mini side quest. Uh, I can't remember exactly what that reward is right off the top of my head, but just keep in mind there is a reward for getting five stars on all these. Now, uh, you know, I guess I guess when it comes right down to it, uh, you know, a lot of them are easy, so you maybe don't need to necessarily overdo it. But um, and to be honest, I really, really don't know if I needed to use, you know, both shrouds for for this guy. He was he's pretty actually he's pretty easy. But uh, there it is, Whistlewind Scarf. So again, like I said, got really, really lucky. And then uh, the Sorcerer's Mike Mark, sorry, is the uh, is the reward for completing that one. Uh, and those are fairly decent, um, but I don't know. Actually, I <laughs> I should I should be completely honest here. They're they're interesting items, but the problem is. Uh, and they, they actually do get a little bit better, but uh, to be completely honest, I don't believe I used a, a, a Sorcerer's Mark the entire time in this game. Uh, so far, anyway. And uh, I'm, I'm right up next to the end, so. Uh, reason being, and I've uh, actually been over it a couple of times, is that, uh, you know, the, the more, the more um, kind of like natural stats that you get, uh, the, the lower your uh, target time ends up being, so. Uh, you can kind of do, do yourself some harm, especially uh, when you start sticking those items on Ravagers. Now, um, as the game progresses, that won't always be the case, though. And we're kind of getting to that uh, tipping point where, you know, more of those raw stats aren't necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, as the as kind of like the Ravagers uh, get, get more damage and as your uh, commandos get a uh, better roll, or you know higher roll levels, they'll they'll actually amplify the damage of your ravagers as well. So, uh, you know those those uh, those core stats will actually do more for you, I suppose I should say. So uh, I guess just keep that in mind, you know. But um, for the time being, I still don't think I would recommend uh, equipping those. Uh, there's just uh, so many really cool abilities and I should say synthesized abilities in the game that I, I tend to focus more on that than raw stats and I feel like uh, that really that really will do you a lot of good um, there's some there's some, like I said, there's some really cool stuff coming up here and especially that's it's really going to um, you know increase or you'll be able to pull off kind of more of those abilities once uh, once we unlock more accessory spots I actually don't remember how many I've got right now if I, I think we're at two two well, we're at two for sure maybe even three I just don't remember. It's been, you know, it's been a, actually now a, a while since I've taken this footage, so unfortunately, uh, I don't, I don't remember exactly. But gosh, I got so low on my characters here. This is kind of crazy. But I guess that's the, the danger with these Sparogs. They're pretty beefy and they do decent damage. So wow, and I still only ended up squeaking out a three star. But yeah, that's a t that's a tough fight. Though. I mean, the Triffids. Uh, debuffing at the at the beginning of the fight is uh, kind of what makes that so dangerous. And then here, obviously, there's some behemoths cruising around, but I'm I'm just skipping all those. I just I think I mentioned it before. I really don't feel like those are worth fighting. To be honest, those Sparogs really aren't worth fighting either right now. They're just the you know the the problem is the well. You know, if you want to, go ahead. But uh, I always feel like the the rewards for that kind of stuff just really isn't worth it. They give you, you know, like some organic materials, and I don't know, organic materials aren't really worth much anyway. So typically, aren't worth much. No, it's not. That's not always the case. But all right, anyways. All right. So yeah, I was right. All right. So that uh, that opens up this teleporter for us now. So um, <clears throat> I guess just keep that in mind. Now we'll be able to. Um, teleport between certain areas now actually it looks like is this the first yeah I think this was the first <laughs> yeah. so that was the first teleporter that we uh, we actually opened up so um, unfortunately we can't teleport anywhere else because <laughs> that's the only one but um, that'll that'll change here in a little bit too once we start uh, you know getting some more of these done but I just I, I guess just keep that in mind and uh, if you pull up your map uh, the teleporting seeth stones will be yellow on your map, whereas you know the other the other type will be blue, uh, or that that is if they're. I think how it works is if they're flashing. I believe that's an active seeth stone that you haven't completed yet. Uh, one that is not flashing uh, is a seeth stone that 
uh, has been uh, completed. Uh, and then the gray ones are the inactives, so that, you know, that always means that uh, you have to complete something else first. Uh, being a, uh, actually I should say it's a, it's another mission that you'll have to, you know, complete first. Uh, and then those will open up, but... Uh, anyways, alright, so we're going to continue on. I don't remember exactly the area that we need to go to here. Okay, I guess i got to pause for a little bit. Let's see how long this is. Alright. I didn't have to make any cuts there. It wasn't too long. I don't know what I was doing. <clears throat> uh, and you'll see around this area is where I really tend to start trying to avoid uh, enemies. Really just because, uh, you know, kind of the same same reasons as earlier. My characters were actually fairly developed. And... Uh, the CP rewards as well as just the like the enemy drops here are just not that great so uh, you know that's that's kind of what I start to do is try to try to avoid what I can try to sneak around some enemies some some I try harder than others you know sometimes you just see me go barreling into the middle of, <laughs> of enemies anyway but uh, you know for the most part it, at certain points here we'll just be trying to avoid some stuff uh, the hybrid flora here are the, the enemies that are, yeah, I believe they're immune to physical attacks, so uh, this actually gets a little dangerous because lightning is extremely low, and I don't think we are, oh, okay, so they are going to launch him, kind of. Um, <clears throat> this, I don't remember, or this may be the first time uh, we've seen this, but... There are also, you know, there are certain spells that will launch enemies as well. I think they're typically the, I don't know if they're the two ATB segments or if they're only three. But um, they'll actually start to kind of launch the enemies as well. So that's kind of one cool thing too because that means that you don't necessarily need uh, a commando all the time to launch an enemy. So, you know, I guess just keep that in mind. I, I still feel like, you know, commandos are the best way to do it, but... Uh, Ravagers can do it to to a certain extent, so I guess you know again keep that in mind. But um, that hybrid flora uh, snow was not bothering to use launch at all. So again, now I don't know if that means that uh, because they're immune to physical damage, um, maybe they're immune to launch too. I'm not really sure, but um, you know I guess that's the other thing you have to you have to know. Not everything is uh, susceptible to being launched either. So. Uh, anyways, all right, let's continue on. So this is kind of a new area. Um, back there and to the right was actually where we fought that uh, the mark with all the all the little the little guys that can summon. I always forget. Yeah, there's so many different um, you know enemy names. Sometimes I get them mixed up. But uh, these are the goblin type enemies, and these ones are specifically uh, munchkins. Now they really don't pose much of a threat. Um, you know, I, I guess. Right now again, maybe 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 that's not fair to say because uh, my characters are fairly developed. But uh, these guys, anyways, are not much of a threat. They'll just use you know physical attacks and fairly minor damage. <clears throat> um, there are certain other goblins that that will buff these guys up, and they'll become a little more dangerous. And we'll, I think, we'll be coming across one of those soon here, so you'll get to see that. But all right. I believe there is a uh, kind of like a split in the path up here and I believe one way has a treasure sphere and the other does not <laughs> evading all kinds of enemies here Well, let's see. Let's see if I'm right here. I think it's actually. Nope, nope. I was wrong. It's not right there. 
<laughs> Just the worst. There, there it is. All right. All right, so here's some more of these guys that can summon. Now, we'll see if they actually get, get to summon anything or not. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'm able to take, take them down fast enough. Now, this is another good example, though, of a, um, of a fight that would be a really good... Uh, or, uh, where aggression, or the aggression paradigm, would be a really good choice. Uh, and again, really just because you want to get... Uh, you know, a lot of yeah, well, for one thing, commandos do a lot of damage, and then it's kind of just the damage calculation with two commandos working together that uh, you know really, really puts up a lot of damage really quick, and it's it's just really nice for taking out uh, large groups of weak enemies. All right, so a mithril bangle. Um, that's going to be an HP uh, oriented item, which again, now I. You know, I've mentioned it quite a few times, but those are not uh, typically items that I'll end up equipping. So, uh, yeah, can't really endorse those. Oh, and okay, so there isn't any other uh, of the the other style of goblins or the ones that will buff, buff the little ones. <clears throat> Maybe on that other path, I'm not really sure. It's... <laughs> I don't think I've actually been down that other path now that I think about it uh, in this playthrough. So I'm not really sure what's down there. Obviously, I wanted to grab the treasure spear, so <clears throat> I didn't uh, didn't bother going that way. But uh, all right, so uh, to be honest, there really isn't much left on this video. There is one other cutscene, however, and uh, this is the second one that's actually kind of missable if you were to continue on with the story and kind of skip this area. So I guess just keep that in mind. It's kind of a neat, it's a neat little cutscene though. Um, now, uh, I've actually read though too that uh, the cutscenes are viewable if you come back here later, uh, like post, I don't know if it's post game or if you come back before you beat the game, I don't know. I just take care of it here and there it is. All right, so I knew there was one of these guys. So this is, I believe this is the Munchkin Maestro. And uh, I would I would definitely say take him down last. Uh, just because uh, really all he's going to be doing is buffing the little guys for the time being. So you don't really want to, and he's really tanky. So, you know, if you try to take them down first, they'll just buff all the little guys. And they'll just end up taking a, a bunch of extra damage throughout the fight. Whereas if you uh, take the little guys down first... Yeah, you know, you'll you'll eliminate those sources of damage, and, and uh, you really won't have anything to buff anyway. So, uh, again, I guess that's how I recommend taking out uh, uh, these formations. Now, uh, I'm gonna cut the commentary though here. Like I said, there's a we've got a, another cutscene coming up here, and um, you know, again, now I I don't remember. Uh, I've read in certain uh, places that it's it's missable, uh, meaning that um, well, I mean, missable means missable, right? You can't ever see it again. So. Um, I get, again, I would guess that's why I kind of suggest coming this way first anyway. But, uh, all right, anyways, I'm going to cut the commentary here. So I hope this guide was helpful, and I uh, hope you guys all join me for more. So thanks for watching. You know, I gotta say, this is weird. When we were young, we were always taught that someday we'd be attacked by the demons of Cocoon. And look at us now, waltzing back into Erba with the very people we were chosen to take up arms against. Yeah, back then we never would have helped you guys. Oh. <laughs> well, right. Back then is when you got your first focus, so. Right. We already talked a bit about that, huh? A little bit. Must have been centuries ago now, when me and Fang joined the battle against Cocoon. During the fight, I became Ragnarok and cracked Cocoon's shell. That, uh, that must have been hard on you going through that. 
the memories, they're all pretty fuzzy. Cocoon's version of the War of Transgression must have been built up around what you two did. I didn't do anything. I just got turned to crystal, and I can't even remember why that happened. Don't even have the memories to show for it. Uh, it's all my fault. So many people died because of me. It's over. Those souls can rest. <laughs>